Hi everyone, this is Garizo here and welcome to tutorial number 3. I know there are a lot of noise tutorials out there, but in every one I watched, you either have a simple solution that doesn't look that good, or you have a good looking texture that requires you to draw shapes by hand and stack layers, and that can become a problem if your shapes change a lot during the animation. So today I'll share with you the solution I came up with, which is good looking, flexible and very simple to apply as a preset. Alright, let's do it! This tutorial is being sponsored by the great guys at AE Juice. I only accepted this sponsorship because I personally have used some of their products and I can guarantee they are all very high quality and they are especially awesome for quick turnaround projects. Ideally, I always recommend building everything from scratch if you can, but truth be told, we all have been in situations where this is not possible. The good thing is that their products are very customizable and if you use them creatively, it will give you some great results and save tons of time and money. They also have lots of very useful free stuff, so check these guys out if you haven't done so yet. But make sure you use my affiliate link on the description of the video so you help to support the channel as well. Alright, so back to our tutorial here. Don't forget you can get the project files, which includes the preset file, for free on my Gunroad page. Okay, without further ado, let's jump to After Effects. And let's start by drawing a random organic shape here. Then let's just make it wobble over time by adding a wiggle path to it. Let's crank up the size, set the detail to zero, points to smooth, wiggles per second to one, and correlation to zero. This has nothing to do with the texture itself, I'm doing that just so we have a shape that changes over time so we can test the texture. Cool, so let's apply the preset now. Noise, texture, enter, and that's it. You can just ignore all the effects here and use this last effect to customize everything. I've used the extension pseudo effect maker to create these controls here. This extension basically allows you to organize a bunch of sliders and controls into a single effect. Just imagine the mess of having all these controls on separate effects here. I put a link to this extension on the description of the video as well. So okay, there are basically four components of this effect. The top and bottom shading and the highlight and green light. By using these checkboxes here, you can turn them on and off. We can change the light angle. The light distance. And on the appearance group here, you can change the shadow color. The shadow size. The shadow blur, which controls the sharpness of the grains. Then we have a control for the grains. We also have this reduced sharpness control to do some minor tweaks to the sharpness if needed. And the last property here is for animation. This is saying that the texture will remain the same for 4 frames before changing. If you set it to 0, the texture will remain the same throughout the whole animation. Finally, we have the rim light and the highlight controls. Where you can change their color, intensity and size. And it's as simple as that. This preset can be applied to any type of layer. Okay, so if you're not interested on what each of these effects up here do and just want the preset, just go to my Gunroad page now and download the project files. But if you're cool and curious, just stick with me and let's go over effect by effect now. So the first effect here is just a grow bounds effect set to one pixel. This is mostly to make the effects work on square images and solids, as some of the effects need an empty alpha pixel to do its calculations. Let's create a solid here and apply the preset. Now if I turn this off, you can see that the effect's not working anymore. 
So this effect is basically extending the container of the layer by one pixel, creating the transparent border that some effects need. The first few effects here is just to guarantee that the layer has a solid color before we apply the next effect, the emboss, which also uses the RGB information of the layer, but we don't want to use that. So using the fill effect, we kill all the RGB information and make sure we are using the alpha channel information only. So the emboss effect is basically what gives us the light information of the effect. The direction here is linked to the light angle control here, and the relief is linked to the shadow size slider here. The minimax effect is linked to the light distance control. By using it in maximum mode and affecting only the color, we create the impression of a growing shadow. Next, I added two color keys to isolate the shadows from the gray background created by the emboss effect. The key colors and the tolerance change based on the selection on the checkbox down here. So if I want the top and the bottom shadows, both effects will keep the gray, so we are left with the white and the black. But if I want only one of them, I also keep the white or the black. This is all controlled by expression using some if statements. The next field is basically to apply the shadow color, and it's linked to the shadow color control down here. Then, as we need the alpha channel information back, to apply the next effect, I use these two effects here. The solid composite just fills any transparent pixel with the solid color. The CC composite comes in to use the original alpha channel as a matte. So now when we apply these two CC light sweeps here, one for the highlight and the other one for the ring light, they will affect the original shape. Watch what happens if I turn the composite effects off. So on the CC light sweeps here, I'm using only the edge parameters. The center is linked to the anchor point of the layer, and the intensity and thickness are linked to the intensity and size down here. Next, the glow, the levels, and the color key work together as another compositing trick. The idea here is to extend the alpha channel, keeping a hint of the edge colors, and then getting rid of the white again. This will help to prevent gaps in the shadow after we apply the next two effects here, the blur and the scatter, which are the base for the noise texture. The blur and the scatter are linked to the shadow blur and the grain control down here. The scatter has this randomize every frame checkbox here, that, well, randomize the scatter every frame, but I think that's usually too much. I find it usually nicer when the noise changes every three or four frames. So I'm using a turbulent displace instead that gives me a way better control over this. The amount here is based on the scatter amount. The animation itself is controlled by changing the random seed. I use an expression to hold for the amount of frames specified on this slider. The sharpen effect just helps to bring back a bit of the sharpness loss after applying the turbulent displays. To finish it up, I applied one CC composite to remove everything outside the area of the layer, and another one to bring the original layer back into play. Then I just added an empty slider control to help organize things visually. And finally, the main control effect that holds all sliders and controls that was put together using the amazing pseudo effect extension, which I mentioned in the beginning of this video. You can get the project files on my Gunroad page so you can keep exploring and also so you don't need to build everything from scratch. But I think it's always good to understand the ideas behind things. To install the preset, you can go to your documents folder, Adobe, Adobe After Effects, use the presets and copy it here. You can see that mine is already here. 
I think it's way faster than the old program files ginormous path that I was used to. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, and if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and share with everyone. Thanks so much for watching, and I see you next time.